Walking arenas, I'm setting it down and I'm raising the bar. Y'all look like the kind to get lost in the devil just playing the part. I belong in the light. Y'all can just stay in the dark. Funny how every time they know who we are, but we say who we are. I'ma take care of the light work and I'ma make them fans go loco. Black and yellow in a logo. I got the game in a chokehold. Music drops, everybody puts their hands up like their nay nay. Y'all know just what they say. Adam Cole, baby. They will not leave any doubt in your mind. This is the moment that they waited to have. So knock you out with a punch of a kick of a little bit of both combo with a dab. Uh, I am Roddy with the flow. Yeah. I am Bobby when I'm bold. Yeah. I'm a Roddy with the gold. Yeah. Every title I'm a hold. Yeah. Our era this hard time, you better recognize. recognize. My lyrics bring the house down where the record lies. Yeah. I keep moving, I can prove it. Let me show you how I do this. Can't refute it. I ain't losing. This flow is undisputed. Boom. Welcome back to the Why So Serious Podcast. I'm your host, Brandon. Uh, Devin is here for a short period of time before he goes off on another flight, and we got Mike. But we also got one of our favorite people, Stephanie from the Mocha Menace Podcast. Hey, Steph. Hi. How y'all doing? I'm doing wonderful. Devin, hey, that song hey, gets hey. me so hyped. I don't know why. Yo, it's, it's dope. It's that dope. beat is so hyped. I don't know why. It's such a, I don't know. Mike, are you there? I'm here. Mike Hello. is here. Devin's here for a little bit. Steph is here. Steph, what's been going on? What's new with you? What's going on with Mocha Minutes? Uh, well, let's see. Just put out my episode uh, this afternoon, actually, with CEO Hayes from the Breaks Media Podcast Network. And uh, next, this upcoming recording on Sunday is looking to be, you know, a little bit crazy. Not crazy and crazy in a good way because I'm gonna have Brandon, but I'm also gonna hopefully I think it's two more people. So I'm excited. You get so many guests on your show. I'm so I need the courage to ask people to come on the show. But see, that's the thing. I have a new guest every week, so I don't know. I don't know how. Sometimes I feel like I'm just lucky. Yeah, I don't know how you do that because I be wanting to ask people and just be like. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I Sometimes like, I wish I had like a booking agent. I'm like, can you just book my guests for me? It's got to be hard. Do you book in advance? I try to. I try to book like a few weeks in advance. We're so organized. Like, Damn, I wish we were that organized. Well, we can't be well, organized because of you. Oh, yeah. That's that's all facts. It's, all it's facts. you. I'd be like, all right, we're going to have somebody in three weeks. And then Devin's like, I, you know, I changed my flight schedule and I'm going to Costa Rica. So I won't be here. <laughs> Did you Devin bring me something back? His life. Oh, uh, you can have uh, one of my shot glasses, I guess. I don't know. Oh, so that's it. the second shot glass you're supposed to be giving me. See how that is? Look, I'm just saying, like, I I just be getting, you know, souvenirs. Just, just uh -huh. I still haven't got the first shot glass. You know what? I got to see you, stuff. That's all I got to do. I got it. I just got to see you. I just saw her with Brandon. I, uh -huh. I heard. Uh, I... I mean, it's right now I'm off um, on Thursday. I'll be in town Thursday and Friday. Yeah. But no, I'm going to see Brandon. So never mind. Uh, see, that's that's not set in stone yet, Brandon, because I might go to Tennis, I might go to uh, Memphis. To get Fuck some money. Memphis! You need to come here. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Wow, okay. Right. okay. You said it with your chest. Wow. Right. With your chest. All right. So before chest. Devin goes on to San Antonio, we need to go to his little. Uh, anime corner and talk. Tell us about what you've been watching. Anything new? Anything so, that I would like? Oh, you have to watch My Hero Academia. It's the best. Uh, it's it's like it's not better than Boruto, but Boruto just has a uh, such a expansive category and like catalog. It's over 500 episodes of Boruto, Naruto, uh, almost 600, 700 episodes of Naruto Shippuden, and now they're on 100 and uh, 128 of uh, Boruto. So. Uh, yeah, it's it's great, uh, but My Hero Academia is pretty fairly new. They're on season three. That means they are up to uh, sixty something episodes, uh, and it's great. It's about um, everybody having a quirk. As far as a quirk is a superpower or something that makes them individualized, and they become heroes. And they protect their cities and surrounding cities. Uh, that's getting super exciting. It's pretty much about uh, kidnapping and human trafficking so far. Uh, and that's really good. 
there's a couple good animes on Netflix. There's a boxing anime on Netflix where um, the main character, everybody else has cybernetic arms, and the main character only has one cybernetic arm, and his name is like Leois or Lee-itis or something like that. Uh, and that's pretty good. Um, definitely watch... Um, Oh man! Uh, oh shit! What is it called? Damn. Anyway, uh, I'll come back to that. It's about Aster and stuff like that. But that's pretty much it, man. It's been working so much, so so much. Devin, so. you know what you would like? That new show on HBO, um, His Dark Materials. Oh, I haven't heard of that. Uh, heard of Stephanie, that. do you know about that? You read books? I saw it. Yeah, that's. I I never read those books. I never read those books. I remember seeing. Because when I first saw the trailer, I was like, is that the Golden Compass? And see, I was probably only the, like, the oh, one of ten yeah, people that, that, that yeah, liked okay. the movie. And I was sad that they didn't continue it, but you know how those Catholics are? So they were like, <laughs> absolutely not. You will not shame us. So, yeah, I didn't get the second one. And you know who else is in there? Daniel Craig. Oh yeah, Daniel Craig. Yeah, Craig. I saw. Uh, is that a limited? It's a limited series, though, right? It's not going to be on. No, I think it's going to be right? a series because it's a bunch of books. Like it's I know, a series, but the Golden Compass movie, Daniel Craig was in it. I know Rich and uh, Trav from PW Tours who've been on the show a few times. They're doing a podcast on the show because they've been reading oh. the books and they love it. Oh. And I think um. it's um, it's about like something like every every uh person has like a spirit animal or something that walks around with yeah. them. Yeah, and I've been trying to get it, but I know James McAvoy's in it, and Lin yeah. Manuel Miranda's in it. I'm just like, you know, yeah. if those two good. are in it, it can't it's be gonna good. be good. Yeah. It's gonna be good. So you didn't see the movie The Golden Compass, right? No, I didn't see the movie. No, oh, okay. I just yeah. know there was a big ass polar bear in it. Yeah. Uh, Netflix. I've been Netflixing it, y'all. Uh, have anybody seen The End of the Fucking World? That's like a British. Uh, it's a British, like, it's not a comedy. It's a That's satire, old on Netflix. Drama. I heard people talk about that for a no, while. It's, it's, but it's season two. Just I just finished season two, and it just I heard season two really came good. out like two weeks ago. I it's really it fucking yet. good. Yeah, I heard that was really good. Um, what about the uh, Astronomy Club skit show? Anybody I watch heard that? that was good, too. Yeah, it's, I, saw, I saw like one episode. It was really good. Uh, I liked it. Um also, I've been I watched a whole bunch of Seinfeld, <laughs> and oh, that's what? always a good been book. watching it uh, on, on Hulu. Oh, yeah, Seinfeld. Oh, that reminds me, Larry David's coming back next yeah. month. Oh, next month. Oh, really? I think it's next month. Hold on, Curb. I'm pretty sure it's next month. Do you watch Curb Your Enthusiasm, Steph? Uh, uh-uh. uh. I never. Oh, heard. you've been oh, missing out. See, you missing out. That's the that's the goat show. Yeah, oh, yeah January nineteenth, next month. I can't wait. I literally can't wait for season two. Uh, Marvel's Runaways comes it comes back. Uh, or is, is back now. It's uh, it came out in, on the all of Marvel TV shut down today. They just they are closing. Yeah, I know. Uh, they're getting merged. But yeah, with the yeah. MCU. I said the Runaways is is on Hulu though. So yeah, that's still yeah. All is that, Marvel is that the last season? Come. Yeah, it's a, it's the final season. So yeah, Steph, you gotta you gotta watch Kirby Enthusiasm. It's the it's just the really. best show. It's just the best. There's oh, no one is... funnier than Larry David. No one. Wow. And JB Smooth. He's funny. All right, Brandon, I'll let you know something um about uh coming to Dallas uh tomorrow. Okay. And uh Steph, thank you. Uh I'll make time uh one of these weekends uh mm-hmm. to see you. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I like I my, my my December is booked up. Mike, uh we'll hang out. And, uh, yeah, thanks for having me on, guys. Uh, I'll talk to you soon. All right, Devin is out of here. He's going to San Antonio. So uh, we haven't done the show in two weeks because I was in Maryland. Um, Mm -hmm. But we will have our fact or fiction segment with Mike a little bit later on. Um, But before then, let's get into some of these news topics. Uh, Mike. Mike? Yes. (laughs) Are you here? I am here. Are you I, present? I'm present. I was expecting you to ask everyone what was going on in our lives. Oh, yeah. Mike, talk to us about anything white you've done recently. <laughs> so much All right. So uh, here's, uh, here's the thing. Let's start with this. Um, 
I have never uh, been one for horror games until like six months ago. My friend, my very close, one of my best friends, uh, and we like to play horror games, but they're all single player. <laughs> We're all too afraid to uh, immerse ourselves fully in the experience. So what we do is we uh, <laughs> we, we play the game together. Uh, we're on the phone the whole time, and we don't progress very far until the other one has caught up. Uh, so we be, we do that every night. Uh, I've been splurging on 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 things. I, I bought a bunch of Star Wars stuff uh, and the Fear of God. It's next week. No, it's two weeks. Oh, it is. No, it is next week. Oh my gosh, we have so much. I know how to count, Michael. Great. Right, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, I bought the uh, Uniqlo did a, a Star Wars line. Um, which just dropped a couple of days ago, and I went and I bought three of the shirts. I sent them to Brandon and Devin. They didn't think they didn't say anything though, so I guess they hated them. But I thought they were really no, cool. No, they were cool. Um, I just don't like yeah, those. and then each shirt is designed by a different artists. So I got those, and then I bought the uh, the Star Wars Bose head, the customized Bose headset for because uh, mm. I I had AirPods, but they like suck. They don't last very long. They were nice for like a month and a half, and then like I used them every day, and they just couldn't take it. So. Uh, that that and it, your the right one is like lower than the left one, like volume wise. It's so just significant. Take them in, replace them. I, could, I should do that just for convenience because I don't want to lug these around. They were really expensive. I don't want to take this headset everywhere I go and like abuse it. Kind of just want something to like travel with or like lounge. Like they're noise canceling and it's really nice. But so I did that. Um, let's see, I'm trying to think of other white people. I thought the horror game thing was pretty white, you know. What is considered a horror game? Oh, uh, there's a lot. There's a pretty big market for horror games. Uh, like uh, we like games where you cannot defend yourself. So like you don't get a gun or anything. You can't like it, zombie games don't count. So like the games we play are like when there are enemies that can kill you and they're terrifying, but you can't fight back. You have to hide, which makes it a lot more stressful. So it's like mm. the game we're playing right now is called Outlast, and. Uh, you are like the premise. It's got a we we play only horror games that have overwhelmingly positive reviews on Steam. Uh, oh. You play as like a journalist who's going into this insane asylum to try and figure out what this corporation was like cutting funding and trying to drive the patients more insane for some reason. And you're trying to find out why, but then you get stuck there and all the patients are like deranged cannibals. <laughs> so like as you're going trying to get out, they're like after you and you have to hide and they can find you. So it's really stressful. <laughs> Oh We're god! Bad. Yeah, it's terrifying. That does that's why we. It is stressful, but that's why we do it on the. Uh, so like the reviews said that most people couldn't sit through twenty minutes of it, and I know that I wouldn't have been able to sit through twenty minutes of it. But when he's when we're on the phone with each other, it's a lot more lighthearted because we're just talking the whole time. Or it's like he'll get a little bit ahead of me and he'll jump or he'll scream, and I'll be like, "All right, so something's about to happen." <laughs> so it's like each of us only experiences like fifty percent of the scary parts. So because uh, we have some expectation of what's coming. Uh, and I bought the Fear of Gods, so I've been splurging. Every time I go buy Christmas gifts for somebody, I feel like I've been getting myself something. Okay, really well. so speaking of that, Mike, you need to splurge on a Nintendo Switch. I saw an ad for it, and I almost did it. But I think after the holidays, I'm going to do it because I spent way too much already on a bunch you of You need stuff. to buy yourself a nice hundred and forty, I mean, hundred and seventy dollar Nintendo Switch Lite, so we can play together, Mike. Yeah, I'm going to get one. I, I just I don't know why I put it off for so long. So the Nintendo Switch is like, I put the article in here because it just had its best week of sales because people are buying the fuck out of it now, especially because they have the light version, so it's a lower cost version. And for those who don't know, the difference between the light version and the normal version is the light version is 100% handheld. So you can, there's no dock where you set it up and plug it into your TV. It's just all handheld. But I kind of wish I had that version because I don't ever play my switch on the tv i always play it land in bed or in the car or on the plane or somewhere where it's not a tv around have you ever played a switch stephanie no i haven't and i thought all this time i thought it was handheld i see everyone playing it and i'm like oh it is handheld but it's a handheld and like you could choose if you want to put it on the tv or the handheld now the new one is all handheld so this may seem like a weird question but do they even make Nintendo Wii's anymore? Or did no. they replace the Switch? The Switch is the new, like, Nintendo console. Yeah, mm. the Switch is the new Nintendo console. So they have Mario Kart and Super Smash Brothers and Zelda and Super Mario and all your favorites 
are on the Switch, and they're all great. They have, like, Pokemon is great. Zelda is, like, the best. Zelda came out when the Switch came out, and the and the game is still $60 if you buy wow. it. Wow. Because it's so great. They couldn't lower the price. I, I beat the game, and I sold Zelda, like, a few months ago. And, you know, GameStop never gives you any money for the game. They gave you me know, okay, $43 is- for Zelda. What? Do you know the one that there is a GameStop that's near me that is closing? I'm like, wow. they're all closing. A lot of them are yeah, closing. No one buys closing. no one really? buys CDs anymore. They all want digital. And now GameStop's trying to sell like collectibles. They do have they some good deals on Funko Pops though. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They sell collectibles for the most part now. Oh, that, oh, that's what you mean. Oh, okay. Yeah, Funko like, Pops, T-shirts, like toys, toys, all yeah. that types of stuff. They have some great deals on Pops, and I'm a huge Pop collector, so I always go there when they have sales. To get yeah, them. me too. So, yeah, Mike, get yourself a Wii before the new year so we can play together. I'll probably get it after the new year, after you the whole. I, I, I mean a Switch, uh-huh. yeah. See, Stephanie, you're confusing me, the Wii. I'm, it's because I still have one. It's funny. I you actually, still have I a Wii? A, yeah, it's not I, like I, I, I play video, I don't really play video games a lot, but I still have a Wii. That's the only game console that I own. Well, actually, no. I have a Super NAS. I wanted it like for one Christmas because I was like, I still am to a certain extent obsessed with Mario Kart. So my brother got me one. So it's around here somewhere. And I want that little um, pluggable like Sega Genesis thing they have. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I just realized on my Switch that they have Super NES and NES emulators. So I just Mm -hmm. set it up and it's like you get to play like 50 Super Nintendo games for free. Through the switch, it's so cool. Um, really? Yeah, I just set it up like yes, two days ago. Um, oh. So it was really cool. They had like F Zero and Mario Kart and Metroid and all the games. It was so it was so cool. Um, speaking of video games, have you noticed, Mike, as a gamer, that more and more actors with names are starting to join video games? Yeah, absolutely. So, That's where the money is, man. Yeah, Keanu Reeves, Norman Reedus, and others uh, started joining these video games, and they're doing it because they got good scripts, they're memorable, they last for a long time, people talk about them for a long time, and they're getting paid. Uh, Guillermo del Toro was doing one. Uh, Let me see who else is on here on this list. Um, Yeah, and you know what? They do voice capture, and they do... um, like their face capture, so they're like faces are actually in the game. So, what's his face is in uh, Cyberpunk, right, Mike? Um, Keanu Reeves. Uh, Keanu Reeves is in Cyberpunk. Yeah. So, and he I looks just, just love Keanu Reeves. I just want to hug him. I want to sit around on a Sunday morning making <laughs> omelets and drinking mimosas and letting him read to me whatever book he's reading. That was an interesting. Uh... I'm just saying, he looks like seriously. No, okay. So, Mike knows. Mike already knows me, but seriously, it would be like Sunday morning after we have like amazing sex. He would go downstairs, butt naked, and make me omelets, and then we'd be drinking mimosas, and then he'd read to me his book. That sounds like he's apparently like the nicest person on the planet. I know. That sounds like boozy baby boy. Uh, it is boozy baby boy, but. I'm sorry. Keanu Reeves looks like he eats pussy, so. I'm sure he does. He probably does. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. He, he, he's he got that face. There's some guys who don't have that face, and there's some guys who do have that face. So, Stephanie, did you know games typically top at 10 hours of content? But some games, like Red Dead Redemption 2, have mm-hmm. 80 hours of content with over 500,000 lines of dialogue. Wait a minute. How you? It went from ten to eighty. I really, I am not a gamer. You can tell. Eighty wow. hours to, to beat the story of Red Dead Two, which I actually started playing again yesterday, which is why I brought it up because it's actually really good. Um, so did it take you eighty hours? I haven't beat it yet. It's going to take me a long time if it's eighty hours. Oh. Um, but yeah, these games are really in depth. The stories are incredible, and it's a shame that they can't make good movies uh, from these video games, but. You know, these video games are telling these fantastic stories. Mike loves The Last of Us. God of War was great. Uh, what was the other game, Mike, that we played on PlayStation? Um, Days Gone. No, Well, yeah, you played Days Gone, but no, not Days Gone. The one with the girl, and she has the bow and arrow. Oh, Forza. 
No, Horizon. Zero. No, no, no. Horizon, Horizon Zero, Zero Dawn. Dawn. Yes. I don't know why These games have fantastic stories that you just follow along. You just get caught up and sucked up in the story. And that's how they get you to play. And these games that have the best stories also don't have a ton of microtransactions, so you get your money's worth when you buy that. Um, but speaking of that, um, did both of you see the Free Guy trailer? Yes. Steph, did yes, you see the I Free did. Guy trailer? I was like very confused at first. I'm like, what the hell is going on? It's this, just like if GTA, if the GTA civilian had a, a movie about him. This Ooh, looks okay. so awesome. Like I cannot wait to see this film. I know it might not be good because video game movies don't typically be good. But this trailer was so awesome. I've watched it at least five times. Like, he's just walking down the street and just all this shit is just happening around him. And I'm like, that's got to be what it's like to be inside a video game. You're just doing a whole bunch of shit and it's just other than NPCs just walking around like nothing's happening. That's so great. So... Anything with Ryan Reynolds, you already got me one foot in the door, just saying he's in the film. And then that trailer just looking so ridiculous, I just I just have to see that film. I don't know. I just have to see that film. Mike, are you excited or interested in seeing Free Guy? I'll be seeing that. I'll probably see it opening weekend. Steph, what about you? Um, I need to see another trailer. I mean, I, I enjoy Ryan, but yeah, I... Mm. That I need another didn't, trailer. That trailer didn't uh, sell you? Probably because I, I didn't get it at first. And then I was like, wait, is this a video game? What's going on? I think if I was a bigger gamer, I'd be like, yes, so going to see this. Yeah, Lil Ro Howard's in this. Uh, Taika Waititi's in it. So it's got some funny people. So I imagine this will be funny. I just hope they didn't show us the whole movie in the trailer, which is also another possibility that's what i said i need another trailer um so there's that um i had the story just for stephanie stephanie are you excited about steve um steven universe okay so can i just tell you i won when i saw that article i went oh shit it is december so here's the thing i have a dvr set recording for steven universe so it wasn't in my um, it wasn't in my DVR. So I was like, but man, it's called Steven Universe Future. That's why I didn't record. Mm-hmm. I'm so mad. I'm like, what the hell? I was expecting you to come in and tell me all about what's going on. With I Steven didn't Universe. know. That's a, because one, it's like I, one, I forgot about the date yesterday. Also, um, yeah, I had a root canal yesterday, so yeah, I was like high and on drugs and in my bed by like 5.30, so I would have missed it anyway, but still, my DVR didn't record it. I would have watched it this morning. So but Yeah, because that one little word, my DVR didn't record it, so I set up my recording. It's on demand. I'm going to watch it. It's four episodes, because I think they did a whole hour. So it says, Steven Universe, the movie started to chip away at Steven's belief he could save everyone. Steven might have been able to point how you say that name? Spino? Spino? Spino. Spino. Yeah, Spino. On a path towards redemption, but he couldn't redeem her himself. His actions were just a bit too self serving to become the start of an actual friendship. The first four episodes of Steven Universe Future go further at deconstructing Steven's savior complex, each in their own way. So, are you excited about seeing. So, these take place after the movie, at, after the stuff of the movie, correct? Yeah, yeah, this is after the. um. Spinel goes with uh, yellow and blue. So are you excited to see what's right. next for Steven? I am, because the thing about it is the way the movie ended, even though they said there were more episodes coming, it's kind of like they could have just ended Steven Universe there, but it's going to be interesting to see how they do post the diamonds are no longer a threat. There's no real big villain for them to fight, at least I don't think it is. So I'm, I'm I'm interested. I want to see what's going to happen. Because it's kind of like the way the movie ended, it was like that, Like even though Steven has Pink's uh, gem, it really is no more Pink Diamond. It's really, it is just Steven Universe. So Mike, I want to see how they go. Mike, have you watched Steven Universe? No, I've never seen it. Oh, Michael. We did a I'm whole sorry. big review 
of the movie. That's it. You know what, Michael? You are now charged with watching Steven Universe, and we are going to re- do a review from the beginning with Michael of Steven Universe on Mocha Minutes. Let is me know a, when you want to do it in 2020. No, it's a no, cartoon. No, it's a show. It's a cartoon. The first five seasons are on Hulu. The episode is only like 12 minutes long. Pretty much. All right, I'll do it. I'm done. See? In 2020, Michael's coming on Mocha Minutes to talk about Steven Universe. I don't think I've ever been on Mocha Minutes. I think you were on once. You were on once because yeah, we had our whole little white segment for Michael. Yeah, I think you oh, were on Oh, yeah. Once. White segment. That's my corner. <laughs> <laughs> so. Gotta own it. I gotta own it. You own it. You own it, half a bit, as Charmaine would say. St- um, Lauren called Michael something really cool, and I don't remember what it was. Oh, I goodness. wanted to call him that forever. Um, I got to ask her what the hell she called him. But it was great. And I need to call him that. Um, so, <laughs> Stephanie is a loser who doesn't watch Watchmen <laughs> like the rest okay, of us cool so people. Let me tell you something. After I saw the little clip, I'm like, oh, wait. I we, knew that would, I knew we that would get you. Cool. I'm I like, knew we that would get fang? you. We getting full frontal thing. Bam. Let me catch on up. Mike, did you watch last night's Sunday's episode of Watchmen? I did. Ever since uh, the Manhattan thing happened, I've been all in. You should have been all in from the beginning. It's I great. was. I just I, I was prioritizing other shows. So Watchmen is the most watched show on cable in 2019 because the only person because who doesn't watch it is did. Stephanie. <laughs> she the only person who don't watch the show. She don't support black people. And good black well, shows. Well, that's a goddamn lie. She don't like. She, well, she I, saw a black woman in the is, show. She said, "I'm not watching it." That's what happened. Wait a minute. What? what are you talking about? That's why you don't watch it. That has nothing to do with it. Mm-hmm. Um, I have said it on this show probably of why I was worried about the show because that movie scarred the hell out of me because that movie is fucking stupid. I'm sorry, classic. I it's like the movie. Stupid. But. It's nothing like the movie also. That's what everybody keeps saying. And then I look. Like at all. It's everybody like has to know Stephanie's rule about her watching new shows. If Stephanie doesn't put it in her DVR, she doesn't see it. So I have to add it to my DVR. So the series is drawn by 7.1 million viewers every week, uh, which is really, really good. Um, is this D&D? This is not D&D. Mm. Um... This is what's the guy? Um, uh, fuck, I forget the guy's name is doing this, but there's a white dude doing it. But this white dude is not holding back on the racism at all. Not trying to cover it. Not trying to color it. Nothing. This what's show that? is about racism. <laughs> like that is the that is the evil in the show. The evil people are the Seventh Cavalry. They are basically white supremacists. They. They are the modern version of the KKK. The show is about racism and its effects on the country. And they use that through the lens of the Watchmen characters. And it's quite incredible. Um, Mm. There's one episode left. This Sunday is the season finale. And I read that they're probably not making a second season. So it's just going to be a one-off show. (coughs) And it might possibly be the best one-off show in the history of television. And I'm not even exaggerating. It's Who is incredible. Damon Lindelhoff? Uh, he's the one who's, who's the one who created the show? I think he's the one who created the show. Yeah. I'm, I'm wikipedia him right now. You need to watch the show, Stephanie. You need, to, you need to binge it so you can enjoy the season finale with the rest of the world. Oh, I'm definitely going to... Oh, oh excuse me. We get Fang, okay? Yes. You get good, healthy, I mean, meaty you things. See that so in I'm all about too. it. See, in the movie, it wasn't a healthy thing. It was just like, yeah. And, Sorry. The, and in the comic I... books, he just walks around with his dick out all the time. That's Doctor Manhattan. He's like, I don't need clothes. What are, What do I need clothes for? Mm-hmm. It just so happens that you know, they have BBC. Dr. Manhattan. Come on. I'm just saying we love British Broadcasting Channel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Shout out to Jay. Mike. 
Yes. What do you think? No, 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 I don't want to spoil for Stephanie. What? Do you think? You can spoil it. Oh, I, I'm not. I'm not one of the people. Go ahead and say what. Mike, do ahead. you think the person is actually dead? No. Do you think we'll see that person next episode? I don't know about next episode, but I think we'll see him again. Well, I don't think there's going to be a season two, Mike. Uh, they're making a lot of money. Yeah, but I think the, the the person who did this show said he was telling a contained story. So I don't think there was any. I mean, they might come up with some bullshit because the show's so popular, but I don't think it was designed to be more than um, one episode. I mean, one season. So I don't know. Um, Stephanie, would you buy the new Tesla pickup truck? <laughs> um, that's a hell no. Mike, why, why are we what pick up? Why? Ugh. Did no, you I'm see not it? buying that. Did you see the picture of it, Steph? I did. I You don't want that? So they have Still. three models. So let me tell you something. Maybe this will change your mind. They okay. have three models. Okay. They come at three different price points. So, so the whole point was so that different groups of people can afford it. So the first mm-hmm. model was like thirty thousand dollars, which is like a little more than the average car, new car. Um, then there's another model that's like forty something, and there's another one that's sixty. Now the each model has so the first model has one engine. I mean one what they, whatever they call the engine. The second model is two, and the third model is three. So just to give you some perspective of how cool this truck can be, the third model. Has three engines and it can go from zero to sixty in two seconds, and it gets about five hundred and eighty miles on a single charge. So you charge it up, you drive five hundred and eighty miles, then you get to charge it up again. And it can tow a Winnebago or like a mobile home. Now, does that make you want it more or less? Absolutely not. It just makes me one wonder when you know is Cybertron going to come into our atmosphere. Or is a Terminator and come back and chase? Up? Who's where's Sarah Connor? I think you know what? I'll they feel going safe. For. I will feel safe if Sarah Connor is still alive. I don't care. Some white woman named Sarah. Connor. What if she I told dead, you the dead. car could drive yourself? Oh, that's it. I don't need no transformer. Absolutely not. Nope. Nope. Cybertron is coming. Where's Optimus Prime? What if I I'm told con- you that it I'm had put- bulletproof windows? Why would I need bulletproof windows? You live in Baltimore. Uh, that's a good one. Okay. There are guns everywhere. You are being ridiculous. I'm trying to keep you safe, Stephanie. Uh, Clearly, with that thing that looks like it could like transform. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Can you just give me a beetle and get me Bumblebee? I will feel myself. No, 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 no. You need the Cyber Truck. That's what it's called. I need Bumblebee. So bring Bumblebee to my. I'm surprised Mike is not all in on this. Who? On this Cyber Truck, Mike. This seems like no. his whole type of thing. No, no, this is not for me. This, <laughs> I mean, um, I have standards. This, like, this, um, this is a, this is not even peak whiteness. So Mike is not in on this. Let me tell you something. I'd buy it. I think this is. I would drive white. this truck. This thing looks so ridiculous that it's so cool. It's so uh, ridiculous and over the top that that makes it cool. Only Elon Musk, who is a supervillain. He's not a good person. He's Lex Luthor. Only Elon Musk would think to come up with this. Mike oh my buys. God, what he is Lex Luthor. He's Lex Luthor. Mm. And he he came up with a flamethrower, which Mike bought. And oh, came, that's right. And he came up with the Tesla, which is awesome, the car. So, you know, you got to give the pickup truck a chance. Um, speaking of robots. Mike is pro AI and pro robot. Always. And he's wrong, always. And I have another story just to prove it. Mike, did you hear about the AI robot that had an emotional meltdown in space? Oh my God. Hmm? Does, that, does that make you want to have an AI robot around? Uh, yeah. SpaceX was finally able to launch its Dragon Cargo spacecraft to the International Space Station this week. After the initial launch was scrubbed due to poor weather conditions, the spacecraft was carrying a whole bunch of neat stuff to the ISS, including the upgraded version of an AI-powered floating robot that lost its cool when interacting with its astronaut handler. 
Roughly a year ago, the Simon robot was being tested for its ability to act as a robotic assistant for the scientists aboard the space station. It's designed to provide information about crucial tasks, provide reminders, and offer helpful tips. Unfortunately, the first iteration of the bot that was tested in space has some emotional demons. ESA published a video showcasing the robot doing its own doing its thing on the space station in December of last year. Things seem to be going well, but the robot spontaneously started acting bizarre. It seemed to get its feelings hurt, then interrogated its handler, Alexander Guess. Alexander Gers. It accused Gers of being mean and then demanded to know whether Gers liked it or not. It was incredibly odd. Mike, that is how it takes over. Did you see that? It just needed some comforting. The, isn't the whole point of robots right. is that now it don't have that? we gotta get them counselors. We need therapists. Who is a robot therapist? <gasps> I should be a robot therapist. I'll be getting in on the ground floor. Jeez, making that money. all about it, Brandon. You're just working Isn't up that up why there. we're told that we need robots? Because they don't have emotions like people and they just make decisions based on the stats and what they think is best. And now this robot's getting in his feelings. See? They just need somebody to talk to. I'll talk to them. But pay me at least $40 an hour. And this is in space. What if the robot what? just said, you know what? Fuck you. I'm taking the air out. I'll be fine. Like KS. See, like, what's I'll the be dude's doing name? Like they do. Who? The Russell robot from Rogue One that we just talked about, Mike? K2. <clears throat> Remember when K2, when he was like, we're going to die in space? He was like, actually, I can survive in space. That's what. Yeah. The, see? Uh, I think you watch too many movies. I'm just saying, I'm going to be doing my therapy sessions remotely, so I don't have this problem. See, this is why we need to put uh, we need to put the kibosh on the AI. End it and end it now. Let's just keep um, it where it is. I don't but you anything. want a Tesla truck. I want a Tesla truck, but I don't need anything nope. more advanced than Siri. Siri nope. is as far as we need to go. Nope. I don't need Rosie from the Jetsons. I seen nope. Rosie lose it. I seen mm -mm. it. Mike, it is time for your segment, Fact or Fiction. This is the segment where Mike reads his three stories. So they might either be real or they might be faked. We don't and know. You Mike knows. Have to guess which one. And we have to guess if they're real or fake. Mike, me and Stephanie are playing the game. You are the moderator. Go. I'm okay. going to get some music for this at some point, but right now it's just <laughs> go. Okay, I have three news headlines for you. Uh -oh. We'll start with the first one. Art, an artist who taped a banana to a piece of canvas sold it for $120,000. Fact or fiction? That is fact. Fiction. That is fact. That actually happened. What the white hell is going on? I will read the... Uh, so when it's fact, I will uh, read a little bit from the article. So let me follow the link here that I provided. So I saw this on Twitter <laughs> and I made sure to save it. The world's gone bananas. Duct taped fruit installations created by Mar Maurizio Catalan sell for up to $150,000 at Art Exhibit in Miami. Art collectors are shelling out the big bucks to get their hands on the prize installation. That's housed at the art bill. Okay, so would you spend nearly $150,000 for a banana duct taped to a wall? Wealthy art collectors are shelling it in. Okay, we already read that. The Parisian Art Gallery, with branches in New York and across Asia, sold the first piece from the Italian artist for a staggering $120,000. Um, I don't know why. A French woman was the lucky buyer of the expensive installation. Uh, she had bought pieces from the Miami <laughs> before, but the comedian was her. The comedian is what it's called. Was her first piece from Catalan. The bananas are sourced from local Miami supermarket and are taped to a wall with a singular piece of duct tape. That's all it is. It's a banana taped to a wall. Oh my god! Mike, what was the race of the person who bought it? Hmm? What was the you race know, of the person who bought it? You know damn well. A French man. You know, it's <laughs> so a, it white a white man. man. A white a, man. A French white man. Ain't nobody else buying that shit. The artist is white as well. Of course. Uh, That's it. I'm going I'm to start getting some duct tape and some bananas and go to France and say, art. All right, so Brandon has one point. Steph, you have to come back to this next one. Okay. Um. <gasps> what? 
Oh my God. Why am I on Twitter and I see your damn story? Go ahead. Banana art. Hashtag banana oh, yeah, I told you. <laughs> okay. Um, popular virtual reality theme park, The Void, is being sued after a guest claims the attraction caused him to defecate in his pants. I feel fat. like that could be true. Um, I'm going to go with fat. So am I. I made that up. That was No, that never happened. What the <laughs> hell? <laughs> that didn't happen? Uh, that didn't happen. As far as I'm aware, I just made that one up. The Void, uh, for those of us who don't know, is a virtual reality theme park where you can not only have, it's not like you can do the Oculus thing, it's like you can actually walk around and jump over obstacles, and it's crazy. I haven't been to it yet. There's one like five minutes from my office, and I think we have plans to try out the new Avengers thing next week. But that never happened. No one has, as far as I know, pooped their pants. Uh, <clears throat> I made that up. And the third one. Hold so on, right so now, you walk Brandon, around with a VR headset on? Yeah, you have like a vest on, a VR headset on. Um, they have them. I think they have them in Dallas too. But uh, you basically like. Haven't you seen the trailers for that new Avengers attraction that's in the void? No. Oh, maybe we should watch it on this show because it's pretty. Like it's a. It's like a story. Ultron. Um, it's like a all the Avenger. It's an Avengers game that you have to. You can only play at void locations, where you can, like help the Avengers take him down, but this time it's not like the Oculus where you're standing in one spot. You, like, run around a room, and, like, the objects in the room are, like, it's like a bunch of white blocks that get rendered to look like you're actually there and running around, and there's wind, and there's heat, and there's, like... How do you not crash into the other people? You can see the other people. But you have a headset on. Oh, you see them through the headset? Yeah. Oh! Oh! Oh, I'm reading it now. A symbol alongside Earth's mightiest heroes in Avengers Damage Control, an all-new virtual reality adventure from Marvel Studios. Shiri has recruited your team of four to test their latest prototype design, a powerful new suit that combines Wakandan and Stark industry technologies. When a familiar enemy from the Avengers past seeks to steal the technology for themselves, your team must stop them before they unleash an oppressive new age upon the planet. Fight alongside some of your favorite Avengers like Doctor Strange, Wasp, Ant-Man, and more, in a race to protect the world. Suit up, step in, and save the world in the Ultimate Marvel Studios immersive experience. Available available exclusively for a limited time at Void. That sounds cool. Hmm. Yeah, so that's a real thing. So they have yeah. Ralph Breaks VR, Ghostbusters, Star Wars, Avengers, and Jumanji. Yep. So Steph, would you do that? I think I would. I like how, I like stuff like that. So they don't have one in Texas yet. Um, have one it's in not Tyson. coming to Texas. So they have one in Santa Monica, San Francisco, Glendale. I should do this when I was in California, Atlanta, Las Vegas, New York. Oh, there's one, Plano, Texas, Washington D.C. Oh, I'm going here. I'm is that the Cinemark? That's interesting. It's the movie theater. I'm going here, Mike. Oh, hey, Cinemark. Boop. So, Steph, you need to go. Yep, there's a Cinemark near me, so I'm excited. All right, Mike, third third and final story. All right, right now, Brandon's up by one point. The final story, Polish game company Playway announces game I Am Jesus Christ, which will allow players to take the role of Jesus and bring a multitude of New Testament stories to life. Hold up, what country did you say? Polish. Polish. Po- are Poland. They, are they super he religious said- in Poland? I'm trying to think. Yes, they are. Then no, I think that's fake. Stephanie? Steph? I think it's fact. Stephanie is right. It's fact. Oh, right. come on. So, um, basically, when <laughs> I actually discovered this on my own. I saw this really weird looking game on. All right, I'm sorry. IGN posted an article about this game, I Am Jesus Christ. The trailer is hilarious. It is the weirdest thing I've ever seen. They Everyone's making fun of it because they gave Jesus a health bar as you just kind of like. They uh, long. I don't really know how to describe it. You have to watch the trailer. But I looked at their page on Steam, and they make these really weird simulator games. I listed a few here. Um, <clears throat> I'll, I'll list uh, the most notable ones. Drug Dealer Simulator is another game they make. Trans Siberian Railway Simulator. 
bum simulator where you play as the a homeless be- man and have to survive on the streets and fight pigeons and attack people. Prison simulator. What? I am your president, which is a Donald Trump simulator where you play as Donald Trump and you interact with Mike Pence and and all of his people and you fight North Korea in wars. Um, Plastic Love, which is a sex doll company simulator. Oh, my God. (laughs) What? So I actually want to show you their page on Steam because it's too funny. So I'm going to pull Steam up and I'm going to share. You have to because I feel like you don't believe me and I need to show you. No, no, no. Steph, do you want to see this trailer? I do. You want I'm to see it? Okay, hold on. I got it. Hold up, Mike. I got it. I got it already up. I'm going to share my screen. Hold on. So grant Skype permission to share your screen. Go to Mac system preferences. What? It's very odd. What? Hold on. Hold on. Give me a second. They also have I Am Priest Simulator. Or I'm sorry, Priest Simulator. That one. Mm. I do want to show you their store page, though, when you're done. Oh, I can't do it until. Let me see. Let me see. Okay, maybe I can. Can y'all see my screen? Mm, I don't see it. I think they're doing it now. Yeah. You can see it? There, official announcement trailer. So this is. Steph, can you see it? Yeah, I can see it. Okay. Hold on. I'm going to play this. Mike, quiet so Steph can hear. Oh, damn it. Let's see. <laughs> it's an article. I mean, uh. Ad. Ad, yeah. All right, hurry up. Oh, they got the whole ad. All right, here we go. No. <laughs> no. How did they okay. come up? Let me show you their store page right now uh, for this developing company because it's just so funny uh, when you're done sharing. Oh, I'm done. I got to turn that off. Wait, 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 let me share. I want to show you just a little bit about their, about their, you have to see some of this other stuff. It's too that good. That is to, crazy. I'm going to talk through it so that the people can, uh, can you see my screen? Yes. You see Steam? Yep. All right, so this company is called Playway, right? So let's go to Playway. There's a Polish company. <laughs> Here are their games. So let me just click on this and go to their actual store page. Playway, publisher. So here are some of their games. Let's go to upcoming releases. This is where I found most of these titles. Uh, Contraband Police. Uh, if any of these stick out to you, let me know. And a drug dealer simulator. Like, let's see what this is, right? Drug dealer simulator. What? We'll put a full screen. I don't you know said, if you can you hear just it. Making weed. <laughs> <laughs> oh my what gosh. is going on? They're just shooting up heroin. <laughs> so, so you're basically just being a drug dealer? It's a video game? Yeah. Drug hold dealer on, hold on. Go back, uh, Mike. Go back to that one. Go back. Go back to that one. Steph, okay, did you on. see what was at the bottom of that? What was that? Go back to drug dealer. Police in the ghetto. In the ghetto? What, what is that? that? Click that. <laughs> What is that? <laughs> Please click that. Mike. Click that. 
it it's say? a blog from the developers. So the developers write these blogs. What does it say? say? Read that. What does it say? The police in the ghetto are formed in two officer riot patrols patrolling certain areas both during the day and night. The night is their domain, though, as during police hours, the amount of patrol in the streets rises and they are much more alerted. During police hours, civilians are prohibited to wander public areas, so you have to be very careful not to walk into a police patrol and get spotted. Both the amount of attitude, both the amount and attitude of patrols you encounter is highly dependent on your actions. Do risky transactions, get chased and caught often, and you will see the patrol count skyrocket. You have nothing illegal on you. You can easily let them search you with no consequences. But that pound of coke in the backpack, well, better if they don't find that, right? What? I want to show you. There's like. What There's some really on? weird <laughs> stuff here. So this is know. so crazy. I'm, Prison what? simulator. Uh, here's bum simulator. This one also got a lot of attention. None of these are out yet, by the way. Like you can see the pictures. <laughs> Your bum simulator. Like the, they called it bum simulator. That's what it's called. You can flick people off as they walk by. <laughs> I these are all, this is all upcoming, by the way. All of these are upcoming. 49 games are upcoming right now for this company. Uh, Prison Simulator, we saw that. Rescue Medic. Some of them, like, Tank Mechanic Simulator. With, what do you, I am Jesus Christ, there it is. Farmers, like, this is Plastic Love, the sex doll simulator company. I'll show this to you. Here's the trailer. Can you hear it? What? No, but we can see it. Why is his dolls. why is his doll sitting cross legged? What the fuck is going on? <laughs> Satisfied client secret fantasies. What Steph, is going on? Look at this. What in the <laughs> why did she drop it? Her head fall off. What the <laughs> hell? And then he said he's like, man, she don't need no head. I'm still fucking it. That's what it looked like. Oh, you're bu- wait, you're building dolls? <laughs> I'm, I know I don't like to do a lot of share screen on the on the podcast. Yeah, this is a podcast that people can't see, but y'all have but to I'm go watch But I'm hoping they just look it up and experience these trailers for themselves. Because you have to see this. You have to look. What in the what? Oh, things got a little too kinky there. <laughs> Did it? Because it's like, what the hell? Plastic love. Mm mm. I actually uh, saw a like... porn video once where they made the girl, they made this woman get in the box, and she was supposed to be acting like a sex doll, and the guy's like, "Oh, so realistic," and she had to keep her same face the whole time, like while she was ha- like while they were having sex. It was like the funniest thing I've ever seen. Uh, this one was really weird. I am your principal. That was weird, and I remember I looked at a lot of these last night. They were just so funny. Uh, and then they, you know, they're, they're, like the priest one has probably the funniest trailer where I was watching this with my friend after we played a couple hours of that horror game. And he watched the trailer first and he laughed so hard. All right, we'll watch we'll that one and then we'll get back to the news. Hold yeah, on, I'm going to yeah, put yeah. it on mine because I have music. What's the name of it, Mike? Priest Simulator. <laughs> priest Simulator? Priest. All right, stop sharing your screen. Okay. All right, we'll watch. This is bad for... Uh, Everyone follow along at home because you won't regret it. Pre-simulator. Which one is it? Is it the way. one where they're like outside, Mike? Uh, I don't know. Share your screen. I'll let you know. If it's by Playway... Oh, yeah, that's... Playway. Okay. All right, we'll share this one, then we'll get back to the news because they're probably like, we can't see none of this shit. I know, I just, I had to talk about this on the show and put that in the game, so. Hold on. You guys tied, by the way. I have some bonus round stuff in the case of a tie if you want to keep going. Uh, we will, okay, hold on. Let me share this. All right. All right, can you guys see? I think it's coming out. Yeah, there it is. All right. That's the one. All right. My computer's been going really slow recently. Okay, here we go. Oh. <laughs> when your day you pick went through, and the two-way he can fuck he, and the two-way, do do goose my tail. So 
tomorrow you have a meal. That's enough. <laughs> that is enough. That is enough. Stephanie, would you play any of these games? What in the fuck is going on? What in the hell? <laughs> I had a feeling you'd like that. That was so ridiculous. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm going to watch all those tonight. All right. <laughs> do you want to do a tiebreaker? No, no tiebreaker because we got behind. We'll save them for next week. Um, because the tiebreaker will only be if we guess opposite. Um, all right. The Rock wants Kevin Hart in the Black Adam movie. You in no. for that? No. Mike? No. The Rock and Kevin Hart are so adorable together, though. They what really he, are, and that's play? the problem. Who would he play? I mean, the little robot thing that they saw in Shazam. Oh, you mean the. You mean the worm, Mr. Mine? Mm -hmm. That would be great if he was Mr. Mine. <laughs> that would actually be pretty funny. Um, but I don't think that's going to happen. Oh, um, man. Robert Pattinson says Batman is not a hero. Well, he's not. Why do these people... What do you mean he's not? He is not. Batman's a hero. To whom? He's a vigilante. Batman's not a hero, though. He's a complicated character. I don't think I could ever play a real hero. There's always got to be something a little wrong, a little bit wrong. I think it's because one of my eyes is smaller than the other one. Okay, who said a hero has to be perfect? What are you guys talking about? I don't. I, I, this makes me so mad when these people come out and talk because I was getting really excited for the Batman. I was getting really excited. Zoe Kravitz is in the movie. As uh, as Catwoman, uh, oh, I'm in. Yeah, you know, Paul Dano's in the movie. Uh, what's his face is uh, Mister. I mean, what's his face is Commissioner Gordon. Um, Who? Um, the black man from. Um, oh yeah. From um, Westworld, Jeffrey Wright mm -hmm. is Commissioner Gordon, which means Barbara is black. So bad girls black. But they haven't announced Barbara, right? No, but she's got to be black if her daddy's black. Does she? We um, excuse me. You see, y'all saw what happened with Fantastic Four, so. I mean that. Yeah, I mean yes, but that would mean they would have to have Barbara be adopted, and I don't think they're gonna do that. I mean, y'all saw what they did with Fantastic Four, and that first one was crap. They, I still love you, Chris Evans. They Wear could all do that. the cable knit sweaters you want. Chris Evans was great in Knives Out, too. Knives Out was so good. Mike, you should have saw Knives Out, but you didn't come to the movies with us. I know I was at work. See? See? Shame. Mike, what do you think about Robert Patton saying Batman's not a hero? I mean, I think I get what he's trying to say. I don't think it was worded very, like, accurately. I think he's trying to say that Batman is one of those heroes that, heroes that like... Can never be happy because he's got all about the mission and he's a vigilante. And but I don't, I don't. We'll see. I'm gonna give him a chance. Uh, did you watch the Black Widow trailer, Stephanie? Reluctantly, I did. See, see, here's the thing. A lot of people out mm -hmm. there talking about. I ain't gonna like the Black Widow. I'm not going to see the Black Widow. It's Marvel. I'm in. But Every, all the all me, I'm be not there. excited. All I'm not there. excited about it, but I'm like, it's Marvel. 
all of y'all gonna be there and it's gonna be good. Cause here's I'm the gonna thing. see it and it's gonna be good, but I'm for a spy movie, I'm more excited for James Bond. Here's the thing. Damn! <gasps> y'all can hate uh problematic Scarjo all you want. She can act. I'm I'm, a, I'm sure. Sure. She can act. Uh, if you say so. She isn't acting someone. Listen, you don't gotta like her. I don't like her. She can act. That movie's gonna be good. It look good. It look good. So And that's the problem. A lot James of problems people make good shit, so <laughs> Well James Bond I don't know if James Bond looks better. And I don't think James Bond is gonna be better. I do. See, mm. you don't support black women. All them black women in this movie, here you go. It ain't gonna be good. Okay. I didn't we say got that a Lynch wasn't gonna be good. Seven. Hello, we are there, hunty. We will be there. You don't. You're not gonna go. It's got a black woman in it. I'm gonna be there. Go not gonna see. be there at the other movie, but I'm gonna be there. Look, when I get my excuse me, I am off on Sunday, so I will be binging Watchmen, so I can get to the big black thing on episode eight. Okay, I got to work up to it. Um. So there's been an update. Did you know Popeyes is now selling a duct tape chicken sandwich for one hundred twenty thousand dollars? <laughs> you silly niggers. That's what they doing. That's what y'all get. That's what y'all get. It's what you deserve. It's what you deserve. Um. Did you see the Wonder Woman trailer? Yes, yeah, that I did. What'd you think about that one? I am at first I'm, I want to know how um Chris Pine is coming back. I really want to know how his character is coming back. They have to explain that right or it's not I'm not going to like it. Yeah, cuz I'm like this is from the 80s and wasn't it in the was it in the what era was it in the first one? World War 1. So was that the 40s? No, like 50? the teens. Exactly. So how is it's like and he hasn't aged. I'm like y'all need to tell me how this works. Well, here's the thing. Um, the villain of the story is Maxwell Lord. And, and Cheetah. And Maxwell Lord in the comic books has some psychic powers. And so it's mm-hmm. possible that he's figured some way out due to some type of artifact or some type of thing that he can project things onto people um, and mm. make them see things or manifest things that they want to but be I real. I feel like other people see him too, so that's why... I don't know. But, okay, what do you think about Kristen Wiig as Cheetah? I think it's going to be great, because I love Kristen Wiig. I do, too. I think she's funny, and she can act, and she's probably going to look really good in the Cheetah uh, makeup and stuff. So, I think it's going to be... I'm really excited. And it's set in the 80s, and the 80s is so extra. So, I can imagine this film just being super extra. The posters were extra. The trailer was extra. I, I just like seeing comedic actors doing serious roles, even though I don't know if her role is serious, but this is essentially not a comedy, so I'm excited. Yeah, and I'm excited. And Max like what? Lord is played by the Mandalorian. Is it? Oh. Yeah, it's Pedro. Oh, oh that's right. That's right, that's right. I didn't know he was the Mandalorian. Thanks for ruining that, Mike. What? It's very common knowledge. That Pedro Pascal is the Mandalorian. I really liked him in Kingsman. Oh yeah, he was great in Kingsman. He was, he was great like in Kingsman. Right. Um, and then the last story. Uh, so they got this Aladdin spinoff, right? Oh fuck this! And oh. the white dude who played that prince in Aladdin is getting a spinoff. Meanwhile, the Middle Eastern guy, Mina Masood. Masood, who was Aladdin, said he hasn't been cast for anything since the movie. He hasn't even no, he hasn't even gotten an audition since the movie. He had any he hasn't audition. gotten an audition since the movie. So, you know, as much as things are getting better in Hollywood, and they are, better is a relative term, but they are getting better for people of color and women in returns in terms of acting roles and in. Starring roles and supporting actor roles and producing and directing is slowly getting better, but it's getting better. It still shows how far we have to go. Because that doesn't even make any sense. I'm like, not going to watch that. Like, who asked for that? 
Who asked for a, a spinoff with Prince Anders? I didn't. He wasn't even funny. I didn't think he was funny either. I didn't ask for that. So, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But hopefully these articles that came out about this will get people to be like, yeah, you know what? I should probably... uh. I should probably reach out to him. See if we can get. I don't him, think so. this is going to happen anymore after all the backlash. I think the movie's still going to happen. Uh, you know what? It, I, know, I think the movie's still going to happen. They'll wait till it dies down, then they'll bring it out. And I didn't watch this, but I know Stephanie watched it. What do you think about the Mulan trailer? Oh, I watched it too, and it was good. I like the second trailer. The first trailer was like mm, the ne- new trailer. I'm like, I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I'm all about it. Let's go. I don't need no Mushu. I'm very excited about this. I'm all excited about watching somebody else's culture, and hopefully they get it right. We'll find out when people go. Mm-mm, or I still okay. think that Ming Na should have been moved on. Um, so this is a young lady, and as as gorgeous as Ming Na is, Ming Na is, could be a teenager. She really could be. It's just she's not a teenager, and we know. I'm sorry. I love her, but no. Maybe if her daughter, maybe she has a daughter, like Reese Witherspoon has a daughter that looks exactly like her. Maybe Ming-Na Wen has a daughter that looks just like her. Or Ming-Na Wen looks like she could be her daughter. I mean, I'm just saying. So, I know this isn't on the list, and we'll probably talk about it on Steph's show. But mm. what, uh, what the hell, what's going on with Kanye? Oh, well... Somebody didn't slide some oil to him. <laughs> what? Was what, what he the tin man? <laughs> well, apparently there's some sort of play or something. I don't know. I Look, I have muted Kanye in my life and on social media. So I'm like, all I get is the millions. And I saw the one where someone said, I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold. And it was um, silver Kanye and gold CeeLo. And I almost lost it. <laughs> it's like, oh. I can't do this. So I don't know. I think it's for a play. I wish somebody would literally like rust him for real and nobody give him any oil. Sorry to this man's children because I'm I'm talking about their their daddy. I don't care. Jeez, Jeez stuff. Mm. All right, Mike. Anything else you got for us before we get out of here? Um. Uh, I did have something. I can't remember what it was. Uh, Marvel Television is closing officially, and all the projects are moving to the MCU mm-hmm. label. Um, a bunch of layoffs happened at Disney, or not Disney, I guess. Uh, Jeff Loeb is gone, um, and a bunch of higher ups are gone, and all that drama. I'm not really sure what, what's going on there. I don't know if this is Disney just trying to make sure they have everything with Marvel Studios or what, but. So that well, they happened. put Kevin Feige ahead of all of it. Yeah, and I heard I read in the article that that had something to do with it. Uh, Crisis is great. Everyone should watch it. I'm only on two, though. I haven't seen three yet. And that's pretty much all I got. Stephanie, tell everybody where they can find your podcast. You can find the Mocha Mendes podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, TuneIn, CastBox, iHeartRadio, Spotify, and hopefully soon on Pandora. I got to get that together. Do you know what this Anchor thing is? What the hell is that? What, Anchor? Like the... So, Anchor is basically a way... It's another way that you can put your podcast on, and it's supposed to be really simple. Um, But I haven't moved mine to anchor and i don't know if i will um but i have been toying with the idea of doing a um a review podcast on anchor i'm gonna bring in my girl cook and we are going to basically review the stuff that people aren't watching on netflix oh okay i'm like look we trying to like i I know disney plus is out there we we love i love disney plus okay although i will say this about Disney Plus and the X Men, the animated series, season five is Wu Chile. Because I was like, I don't remember any of this. And I'm like, I don't remember any of this. The characters are drawn different. Jubilee has a whole different hairstyle. The Bob is fierce, but still, I'm like, I don't remember any of this. And the way it ends is like, wait, 
I feel confused. And also, the only thing about Disney Plus, and this is like a con, but it's not not really, is that some of the shows, the episodes are out of order. Yeah, X-Men is out of order. X-Men is, I was like, how? Because when it was like, and also, this is an aside to Fox and watching the X-Men animated series do not one, not two, but three different multi-episode arcs of the Phoenix saga. Mm Mm-hmm. And y'all tried to really put this in a fucking movie. You guys are fucking weird. You're stupid. It's like this literally 12 episodes for the Phoenix Saga, and it's three different things. It's the Phoenix in the Dark Phoenix. It's like 60 issues. Like, there's a whole arc of this whole thing that happens to tell that story. Right. I was like, why did y'all think that y'all were going to be able to do this? I'm like, y'all can't do it in one when I think about the two different um, series, they both of them fucked it up in different ways. It's so weird. Mm-hmm. It's, it's so like... weird. I'm like, how did, fuck, how did y'all fuck this up? I'm like, I, I mean, I can see how, but it's like, yeah, y'all should have left the Phoenix alone. I feel like if y'all left that alone, I'm like, maybe like try to build more Gambit into this. I thought it was really weird that there was all this talk about bringing Gambit to the big screen, and then Mr. Magic Mike was like, nope, nope, you're not putting my thing out there, and he said no. See? That's because people don't care about the source material. I'm just saying. I could do a whole podcast, like, not an episode, like, an entire podcast on how Fox fucked up the X-Men. But You should! Bring in old man Wade. Y'all should do that. I love myself too much to do that. Because I would have to go back and watch those movies, and look, look, I don't want to do that. I don't. I can't. I can't do that. I can't believe I hate watched The Dark Phoenix. I'm like, I went to the movie theater and watched Dark Phoenix. I fell asleep on a plane. I I watched it for the first time on a plane, and I wasn't tired, and I fell asleep in the middle of the movie. That is so sad. It was just like, I'm watching this movie like, this is the dumbest shit I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. I was in the theater just being angry. It was so. No Wolverine. I'm like, this is so fucked up. I'm like, what the hell? I'm like, y'all made Gene this weird ass age. I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? It's very, very stupid. But thank you, Stephanie, for coming back with us. It's been too long. Um, it has been. Thank you so much for having me. We'll get you on for the Knives Out review and maybe one of these yes. Star Wars reviews. Yes. Because we still we got to knock out like five movies. In, oh my God. Week, in the week and a half before the movie. Are comes you doing out. Queen and Slim? I have. I'm supposed to go see that tomorrow, so okay. I haven't seen it yet. So I'm gonna go see that tomorrow. Um, I've been avoiding it, but I need to go see it. Rashani wants me to see it. <laughs> so Rashani seen it already. Yeah, he's seen it already. Okay. So I'm I gonna know try what he to thinks. get and see that tomorrow. Uh, but Stephanie, thank you for joining us. Make sure you go and subscribe to the Book of Minutes podcast. It's wonderful. I'll be on there Sunday, which is yep, great. Yep, yep. Um, Mike, we'll be back for Star Wars later this week. Maybe Thursday we'll do A New Hope. Uh, since Devin says he's free, he'll be out here with me. So we'll watch it together and then do it if you're free. Yeah, I'm um, down. But you can check out all our Star Wars Rewind reviews on the podcast feed. Um, we just did Rogue One. That'll be up tomorrow. And we'll be back next week. I think Reese is going to join us. From the Nerdy Yay! Watch podcast. So Yay! we'll have another guest next week. So we'll talk to you then. Thank you for listening. Peace.